Mr. M presents Adding Integers by Decomposing Numbers. Hi there. Here's another strategy my students like to use when they're adding integers. This one is a little more useful for when we're starting to grow out of wanting to draw physical models, especially when we're getting into larger numbers. We don't want to draw 50 or 100 counters or draw number lines that go up into the hundreds if we don't have to, because that's not a very efficient use of our time. One thing we have to consider if we're going to understand how to do this math, though, is the zero principle. And I've talked about zero principle in former videos, but essentially what that means is that a positive integer and its opposite negative integer, when added together, equals zero. So any number, when added to its opposite uh, positive or negative integer, are going to equal to zero. So here's a good example. So we have positive 50 and negative 50. Those integers have the same value, but they're just on opposite sides of zero, meaning that if I add them together, they are always going to equal zero. Okay, No matter what the number is, it can be a million or one, if I add my positive and negative version of the same number, they're going to equal zero. That's going to be really, become really important in that strategy you see. So let's take a look. Positive 67 plus negative 59. Uh, with a little mental math, I can probably figure this out. Showing it with counters and number lines are not going to be really time efficient. One pretty fast way I can do this is to use the zero principle. I know that if I have negative 59 here and I added positive 59, that would equal zero. Now there happens to be enough numbers in 67 to have a positive 59. So look at what I can do. I can figure out, oh, okay, if I break 67 down into a positive 59, and then to whatever's left over, then I can simply uh, get rid of the positive and negative 59, and whatever's left over will be my answer. In this case, a little bit of mental math tells me that positive 67 is the same as positive 8 plus positive 59. Now I can simply cross out negative 59 and positive 59, because together those two numbers equal 0, and what I'm left with is positive 8. So the answer to this question very quickly becomes positive 8. Let's try another one. Negative 42 plus positive 21. I for sure have enough numbers to get a negative 21 out of here. And actually, wouldn't, you be, wouldn't it be a, a surprise? But I also then would have another negative 21 because negative 21 and negative 21 equal negative 42. This negative 21 and this positive 21 cross each other out and equal 0. I'm left with the integer negative 21 and that would be my answer. My overall answer would be negative 21. Let's look at the pros and cons of this. Pros of this compared to the other strategies is I don't have to spend time drawing counters and number lines, so it's going to be a little more time efficient. Negative one is I did have to do this little bit of mental math here where I had to divide 42 and figure out what 42 take away 21 is. If uh, I could make mistakes there if I'm not careful, but it's certainly a lot faster and it uh, saves me a little bit of time too in terms of figuring out the integer math, okay? Good luck. Hope one of these strategies is very helpful to you.